Star KIC 8462852 is not what you think it is according to Dr. Edward Mantle. A very unusual star discovered last year sparked speculation about intelligent aliens and is still baffling scientists trying to explain it. Star KIC 8462852, from the constellation Cygnus, was seen to be sporadically dimming when it was discovered in 2015. Theories as to why this was the case ranged from an abnormally large amount of comets orbiting the star, or a megastructure constructed by aliens. A new study by the Carnegie Institution in Washington, D.C. attempted to analyze what was going on with the distant star using the Kepler Space Telescope. The observations through Kepler found the star has faded gradually over the last four years and by 2% in the six months while they watched. Meanwhile the erratic pattern of brightness changes often explained by dust clouds and passing planets, are like nothing seen before. The steady brightness change in KIC 8462852 is pretty astounding, said astronomer Dr. Ben Monnet. Our highly accurate measurements over four years demonstrate that the star really is getting fainter with time. It is unprecedented for this type of star to slowly fade for years, and we don't see anything else like it in the Kepler data. The research will be published by the Astrophysical Journal. However Dr. Edward Mantle claims that this is in fact a natural occurring Tipler cylinder and is being used by the old ones to come here. First off you need to know that CERN in itself is a Tipler cylinder, we will go in more detail about this if you ask but we think you will get the idea after this. A Tipler cylinder uses a massive and long cylinder spinning around its longitudinal axis. The rotation creates a frame-dragging effect and fields of closed time-like curves traversable in a way to achieve subliminal time travel to the past. Civilizations with the technology to harness black holes might be better advised to leave wormholes alone and try the time warp method suggested by U.S. astronomer Frank Tipler. He has a simple recipe for a time machine, first take a piece of material ten times the mass of the sun, squeeze it together and roll it into a long, thin, super dense cylinder a bit like a black hole that has passed through a spaghetti factory. Then spin the cylinder up to a few billion revolutions per minute and see what happens. Tipler predicts that a ship following a carefully plotted spiral course around the cylinder would immediately find itself on a closed, time-like curve. It would emerge thousands, even billions, of years from its starting point and possibly several galaxies away. There are problems, though. For the mathematics to work properly, Tipler's cylinder has to be infinitely long. Also, odd things happen near the ends and you need to steer well clear of them in your time ship. However, if you make the device as long as you can, and stick to paths close to the middle of the cylinder, you should survive the trip. The Tipler cylinder, also called a Tipler time machine, is a hypothetical object theorized to be a potential mode of time travel an approach that is conceivably functional within humanity's current understanding of physics, specifically the theory of general relativity, although later results have shown that a Tipler cylinder could only allow time travel if its length would appear infinite. The key characteristics of the application of Tipler cylinders for time control and time travel are presented in the picture below. This is followed by more detail describing the approach below. The Tipler cylinder was discovered as a solution to the equations of general relativity by Willem Jacob van Stockham in 1936 and Cornel Langchos in 1924, but not recognized as allowing closed time-like curves until an analysis by Frank Tipler in 1974. Tipler showed in his 1974 paper, Rotating Cylinders and the Possibility of Global Causality Violation that in a space-time containing a massive, infinitely long cylinder which was spinning along its longitudinal axis, the cylinder should create a frame-dragging effect. This frame-dragging effect warps space-time in such a way that the light cones of objects in the cylinder's proximity become tilted, so that part of the light cone then points backwards along the time axis on a space-time diagram. Therefore a spacecraft accelerating sufficiently in the appropriate direction can travel backwards through time along a closed time-like curve or CTC. 
CTCs are associated, in Lorentzian manifolds which are interpreted physically as space-times, with the possibility of causal anomalies such as going back in time and potentially shooting your own grandfather, although paradoxes might be avoided using some constraints such as the Novikov self-consistency principle. They have an unnerving habit of appearing in some of the most important exact solutions in general relativity, including the Kerr vacuum, which models a rotating black hole, and the Van Stockham dust, which models a cylindrically symmetrical configuration of rotating pressure less fluid or dust. An objection to the practicality of building a Tipler cylinder was discovered by Stephen Hawking, who posited a conjecture showing that according to general relativity it is impossible to build a time machine in any finite region that satisfies the weak energy condition, meaning that the region contains no exotic matter with negative energy. The Tipler cylinder, on the other hand, does not involve any negative energy. Tipler's original solution involved a cylinder of infinite length, which is easier to analyze mathematically, and although Tipler suggested that a finite cylinder might produce closed time-like curves if the rotation rate were fast enough, he did not prove this. But Hawking argues that because of his conjecture, it can't be done with positive energy density everywhere. I can prove that to build a finite time machine, you need negative energy. Hawking's proof appears in his 1992 paper on the chronology protection conjecture, where he examines the case that the causality violations appear in a finite region of space-time without curvature singularities and proves that there will be a Cauchy horizon that is compactly generated and that in general contains one or more closed null geodesics which will be incomplete. One can define geometrical quantities that measure the Lorentz boost and area increase on going round these closed null geodesics. If the causality violation developed from a non-compact initial surface, the averaged weak energy condition must be violated on the Cauchy horizon. Stay paranoid my friends.